Hello, my name is Bria and I make videos all about travelling, including how-to videos, vlogs, so if this sounds like something you'd be interested in, please do hit that subscribe button. So this video is all about cards to take travelling with you. So these are prepaid cards and debit cards. Now this is a really good alternative for going travelling with if you don't want to take out a credit card. So usually travel credit cards have a hefty interest rate, which means that if you don't pay it off in full each month, then you're going to be stacking up a lot of interest to pay off. So the difference is with debit cards and prepaid cards, you're uploading that money on there that you already have, so you're not borrowing any money at all. So before going into this before going into the specifics, it's worth mentioning the benefits of all of these cards that I'm about to talk about. So all of them use near perfect exchange rates, MasterCard exchange rate or the interbank exchange rate. So they're both really good exchange rates and they give you a more favourable exchange rate compared to more traditional banks. So another benefit and what I really like is that, as I said before, they're all app based banks. So they all have a really nice app interface, which is really simple to use. One of the features that I really like about having an app-based bank is the ability to block the card if you lose it. So if you're in a foreign country, you don't have to ring up and get your card blocked that way. You can literally just do it yourself on the app. Then if you do happen to find your card, then you can just unblock it on the app as well. So your card isn't permanently blocked unless you want it to be, which is another really nice feature, especially if you're in a foreign country and you're on your own. <laughs> So another universal benefit of using all of these cards is that all of them offer spend tracking and budgeting within the app. So this basically allows you to categorise where your spending is going. For example, if you're spending all your money on eating out, if your money's going on bills. Yeah, it's just a really nice feature to know where your money's going and just manage your money a bit better. So the first two cards I'm going to talk about are both Monzo and Starling Bank. So the good thing about these two cards and what they have in similar is that both cards can be used as a debit account. So they can be used as a actual current account in which you can spend in your home country. So I actually use Monzo myself and I really enjoy using it as my current account. But also the benefit is when I go abroad, I don't have to change to a different card, which is really nice. So a benefit of both of these cards is that they both use the MasterCard exchange rate. So as I said before, MasterCard exchange rate is a near perfect rate and it's really good for you if you are converting or spending abroad. Another good thing is that both of these cards have no foreign conversion rate fees. So basically when you spend abroad for traditional banks they usually charge a fee, usually a percentage of whatever it is you've spent or just a one-off standalone fee that they'll add for any foreign transaction that you make. So the good thing about these two cards is that they don't have this. So when you spend abroad it's literally just the exchange rate. You don't have to worry about how many transactions you make and how many fees are being lumped on top of that because you have none of that with both Monzo and Starling. Another really super thing about both of these cards is that they offer no ATM fees. So before, Monzo offered a free cash withdrawals from ATMs up to £200 and then Starling just had no limit whatsoever. So now Monzo have removed that so you can withdraw any amount of cash from ATMs when you're abroad and they won't charge you a fee to do so. So it is worth mentioning that with Monzo, you can withdraw unlimited amounts of cash from ATMs within European countries. So any countries within EEA countries, this is European Economic Area countries, then you can withdraw unlimited amounts of cash from ATMs without fees. However, if you go outside these countries, any other country, you can withdraw up to £200 every month without fees. And if you want to go over this, then you get charged a 3% fee of whatever it is you're taking out. So up to £200, you're fine. But then if you want to take out anything above that, you will be charged 3% extra. And in comparison, Starling Bank doesn't have this limit. So wherever you are in the world, you can withdraw cash um, unlimited and you will not be charged a fee on top of that. So a benefit of using Starling over Monzo is the fact that you can earn a 0.5% interest on balances up to £2,000. Anything above this and you'll earn 0.25% interest. Now this doesn't seem like a lot and traditional banks do usually offer a higher interest rate on your savings or on your current account, but if you're not paying all those fees and conversion rates then yeah, Starling is a good option. So Monzo does also offer interest on your balances. However, in order to do this, it's not the current account that you're getting interest on like it is with Starling. It's actually a separate account that you would have to open with Monzo in order to get interest. And the interest rate is higher than what Starling offer at over 1% interest rate. 
However, it's a separate account and it's not actually on the current account that you would take traveling with you. So Revolut is a little bit different to both Monzo and Starling because both Monzo and Starling are debit cards. So these can be used as current accounts. So with Revolut, it's a prepaid currency card. So this basically means that you upload money in the currency that you want to use. Well, I could have both UK pounds on there and I could also have euros. So for example, if I go to Italy and start spending money, it will use all of the euros that I've uploaded onto my account. However, if all of those are gone, it will start to use the UK pounds that I've got on my account. And then it will use the interbank exchange rate to then convert those into euros. And the good thing about this is that if I upload euros onto there, I can lock in the best exchange rate. and. Revolut uses the interbank exchange rate. So this is a bit different to the MasterCard exchange rate. So the interbank exchange rate is what banks use between themselves. So if you Google the exchange rate for something, that is what comes up. That's the interbank exchange rate. So this is the best exchange rate you can get. So similar to Starling and Monzo, with Revolut, there are no foreign transaction fees. So you won't get charged for spending abroad. Another benefit is that there are free ATM withdrawals up to 200 pounds. So similar to Monzo, if you, you can spend up to 200 pounds or withdraw up to 200 pounds every month for free without a fee being applied. But if you take out any more than this, then you'll get charged 2% of whatever you're taking out. Probably the most appealing thing about the Revolut account is the ability to transfer money to different countries and receive money without fees. So this is done at the interbank exchange rate, which as I said before, is really good. And you won't actually get charged for sending money to friends abroad, to family abroad, or if you have another bank account in a different country, then you won't get charged to do that. The downside of the interbank exchange rate is that when the markets are closed on weekends, there is a 0.5% markup on transactions. Another downside of Revolut compared to both Monzo and Starling is that both Monzo and Starling offer overdrafts. So if you do need a little bit of spare cash, then it's there in case you need it. However, Revolut does not offer this. And again, Revolut does not offer any interest on balances on your card. So overall, I would say that Starling is the best option as you can use it as a current account and there are no ATM fees for whichever country you go to in the world. And what really differentiates Starling from Monzo and Revolut is the fact that you can accumulate that interest on whatever money is in your current account. However, with that being said, Monzo is another great option, which I actually use myself. It's really simple to use. However, it's not quite, it doesn't have quite the same benefits as Starling at the moment. So I would say if you're gonna go for one of them, if you're choosing between the two, go for Starling. Last but not least, Revolut. So if your main goal is to transfer money abroad, or to hold money in different currencies at their best exchange rate, then Revolut is probably the best one to go for. So anyway, that's it for today. Um, I've left some links below in the description just in case you are interested in applying for any of these cards. Um, neither of them are sponsored or affiliate links, um, but they're just there in case you want to find out more information. But please do leave a comment on if you've tried any of these cards and your opinions on them, but also if there are any other options that you do recommend for people to try then I'd be really interested to see what those are and hear about them. Um, but yeah, so I hope this video was useful and um, please do give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and found it useful and please do share as well. And um, yeah, see you next time.